Hi, good people. Once again, it's good to be in this position to discuss a few of the conditions that we see and the questions that we get from um, a lot of you on our social media. I've been receiving quite a number of questions around stress and how stress affects hair or how stress is related to hair loss. One of the things I want to start by mentioning is that your hair is a barometer of what happens in the body because our hair is connected to an extreme high level of nerve endings and it communicates with the rest of the body. Essentially, there is a, a link between the hair. We call it the papilla or the papillae. That is the communication center between the hair follicle and the rest of the body. So if anything happens outside the body, then the, the hair strand can actually communicate that to the body. And if the body, the, whatever is happening inside the body, then the hair is in a position to recall that. And most of the time when there are changes in our life, be it you got very sick, you're on strong medication, you are stressed, you got food poisoning, the hair will either shed in communication that something, there is some imbalance in the body system. So when we are stressed, and I use the word stress very loosely, because if your body is under duress for whatever reason you're stressed, I do not necessarily mean that you're psychologically stressed. However, it doesn't matter. If you're physically, psychologically, or mentally stressed, then the body will record that and the hair will be able to pick that up. What happens is that when the body goes under a lot of duress, then we we produce or the follicles rather produce something we call substance p now every follicle is like an individual it has its own immunity system now when the follicle produces substance p it leads to the collapse of the growing phase because your hair follicles go through a growing phase which would last for anything between two to six years some people will say two to four years and then it has a transitional phase that we call the catagen, which lasts for like 14 days. Now that transitional phase is moving from the growing phase to the shedding phase where the hair follicles then kick out the hair that was existing and start producing um, new hair that will have to go through the two to six years. So essentially when the follicles are under duress or they record um, stress or stress imbalance in the body system, then they produce something we call substance P that collapses the growing phase and quickly moves the hair to the shedding phase. And then if the stress is chronic, you will have a lot of your hair follicles moving from anagen, which is a growing phase, to telogen, which is a shedding phase. And then you'll have this diffuse hair loss coming off. Or in some cases, the hair loss will be in patches. So you have this very smooth, ovalish kind of patches that lose the hairs, strands completely. If the stress was acute stress, then what happens is that you will immediately shed hair. The hair will actually start shedding off in something we call anagen effluvium, that the hair really sheds off in the growing face. So you quickly, particularly if you went through serious food poisoning and then you just quickly shed off all the hair. The hair did not have time to go to the shedding face. It immediately starts falling off in the growing face. We call that anagen effluvium. However, if the stress happened today and three months later, you're shedding the hair because it takes up to three months for the hair to move to the growing face to the shedding face, then we call that telogen and effluvium and ideally what you see is your hair diffusely coming off and you will notice that it comes off with a speck at the root or at the bottom of, of, of the strand that, that falls off. So essentially when you have high levels of stress it compromises the immunity of your follicles. It leads to the collapse of the growing face of the follicles and quickly moves the hair follicles to a shedding face where then you have chunks of hair coming out of the scalp it could be out of your beard it could be the eyebrows it could be your pubic or auxiliary hair strands could just fall off if i you allow me to say the good thing if there is anything good about losing hair is that stress would rarely lead to permanent hair loss unless it triggers a pre-existing autoimmune condition that we have autoimmune conditions that would lead to permanent loss of hair follicles but majorly 
stress that triggered some um, shedding of the hair but then mostly the follicles are spared meaning that once you go through that phase of stress your follicles should be able to reproduce hair or if there was an inflam inflammatory process if the inflammatory process is managed then you should be able to get back your hair so in a um, nutshell what stress does it collapses your um, community system of the hair follicles by production of something we call substance p and then the follicles move to the shedding phase where they shed excessive amount of hair but you should be able to recover that hair as soon as the stress is over or as soon as the body adapts to whatever was a shock at the beginning i hope that will be helpful however if you have stress and you don't seem to get your hair back please make sure that you get it checked before it's too late <music>